this tutorial, we're going to solve an inequality here. This is known as a triple-sided inequality. It's not the official name for it, but it's a name I'm fond of because it has three sides. And uh, the sides can be thought of as the left, the middle, and the right side. And when we solve this, we're going to write the solution in interval notation and also graph the solution set. This skill belongs to algebra. And uh, it's the skill itself is just solving a triple-sided linear inequality. We're going to graph the solution set, like I said, and write the answer using interval notation. Some prerequisite knowledge is required, specifically solving linear equations. Uh, you Solving an inequality is just like solving a linear equation. You can add and subtract from both sides, or in this case, all three sides. And you can multiply and divide from all three sides. You should be able to interpret inequality notation, so you should be able to know what these symbols mean. And you should also understand that multiplying or dividing by a negative will flip the inequality signs. You should be able to graph a solution set, and you should be very familiar with interval notation. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Solve the inequality. 0 is less than or equal to 3 plus 2x, which is less than. 10. Now if I want to solve for x, so let me just highlight x here, we want to get x by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 3 from not just one side, all three sides. So I'm going to subtract 3 from the middle and from the left and from the right. When you do that, your triple sided inequality becomes, well let's see, 0 minus 3 is a negative 3. Keep that inequality sign, which is less than or equal to. That 3 and that negative 3 cancel out, so you're just left with a 2x in the center. Strictly less than 10 minus 3 is 7. And now, again, I still want to solve for x here, so I'm going to divide this middle term by 2, which means I'm going to divide all of the sides by 2. When I do that, I get this beautiful negative 3 halves is less than or equal to x, which is strictly less than 7 halves. Prior to writing this in interval notation, I'm going to go ahead and graph it, because that might just help out. Let me go ahead and graph a number line here. And I will write in the numbers negative 3 halves, which appears pretty far to the left on that number line and then the number 7 halves, which appears pretty far to the right on the number line. And, of course, there's 0 in the center here, but we're not worried about 0 here. And let's look at this. Uh, this notation can be split apart if you really wanted to write it that way. Some people do prefer to split this apart, so let's talk about it. You can break this apart and say, well, both these conditions have to be satisfied at the same time. So we use the word and there. X must be greater than or equal to a negative 3 halves. So that means that I'm going to shade stuff to the right here. It's got to be bigger. X has to be bigger than negative 3 halves. But at the same time, it has to be below 7 halves. So where these two areas meet up is our solution set. I often don't break it apart. In fact, I often think of this as sort of like boundaries or something like that, that x can bounce between negative 3 halves and go all the way up to 7 halves. Now, we have to worry about these endpoints of this region here. The fact that this says less than or equal to means that I can equal negative 3 halves. So I'm going to put a bracket there and face it in the direction of the shading. And the fact that this is strictly less than means that I can't actually equal 7 halves, so I'll put a parentheses right there and point it in the direction or open it in the direction of the shading. And that will help me with my interval notation. The interval notation, remember, goes from the leftmost to the rightmost point, so a negative 3 halves all the way up to a 7 halves. And then you have to copy this notation, the bracket here and the parentheses there. So we have the graph of our solution set, and we also have the interval notation for our solution set going from negative 3 halves to positive 7 halves, including negative 3 halves, but not including positive 7 halves. 
Something I, I want to mention really quickly as an aside is that inequalities always have regions of solutions. We call these solution sets. So had I been solving, let's just pretend, 3x plus, not 3x, 3 plus 2x is equal to 10, I would only get one solution. It would only be a little point on the number line. But because there's a less than, it creates an entire region of solution. There's a lot of things that are less than that. So that's why we have this whole set of solutions rather than a single or a double solution. We have a whole set of them.